Hi, welcome to Module 11 of Applications in Engineering Mechanics. Today we're going to apply the method of joints or pins and the method of the sections to study 3D trusses. Last time we looked at this tower crane and we actually did an example. We modeled it as a 2D structure, but in reality it's more of a 3. It's actually a 3D structure, so we're going to learn how to uh, make our models a little bit more complex and analyze them in three dimensions. And so I have a, a small model or section of this tower crane, and this is the type of structure you'll be able to analyze as a result of this series of modules. Over here, uh, we have a tripod, and on this tripod, uh, it's a camera tripod, but this is also a, a sort of 3D uh, truss-like structure. So let's go ahead and, and, and look at an actual problem. Here's a, a space truss very similar to the, the, the tripod. Uh, we have an applied force at point D down here that's given. Uh, we have a, a, a pin connection at C, or what's also called a ball and socket joint. And the only other non-zero reaction components are at points A and B, as shown. And we want to uh, solve this. We're going to do it a piece at a time. In this module, we're just going to find the reactions at A, B, and C. So my question to you is, what should you do first? As always, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the entire structure. Let's go ahead and do that together. Uh, these forces are already shown at the bottom, and so the only thing we need to put our force reactions on is, uh, and, and possible moment reactions is at the pin connection at C. And so let's look more closely at this pin connection at C. This is, this is a generic ball and socket joint or a pin joint that I've got here. Um, what that does is it prevents motion in the X in the y and in the z direction, linear motion. But it doesn't uh, prevent rotation about the x-axis, it doesn't ro prevent rotation about the y-axis, and it doesn't ro prevent rotation about the z-axis. So the only reactions that you get from this ball and socket or pin joint are forces in the x, y, and z direction. So let's go ahead and draw those on my, my free body diagram. So I'm going to have F... Cx, oops, this is y, Fcy, Fcx, and Fcz. And so now I have a good free body diagram. And what do you do next? Think, take a minute, keep on going if you can without coming back if you can continue to solve the problem. Okay, what we're going to do is now apply the equations of equilibrium. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the, uh, some of the moments about point C uh, to get one of the equations of equilibrium. So we'll do that together. Um, now, you're going to have to be uh, more careful now and go back to the things you learned in my earlier course in Introduction to Engineering Mechanics by doing this moment equation in three dimensions. And so we're going to have to have None of these force reactions at C are going to cause a moment or a tendency to cause a moment about point C. So the first one we're going to look at is FAX. And so we're going to have R from C to A as a vector crossed with FAX plus, now FAY is also going to cause a rotation about point C. So we'll do that in three dimensions or vectorally. So we have RCA crossed with F-A-Y. And then we have a force here at D. So we're going to go plus R-C-D crossed with F, which is given. And then finally, one more force that's going to cause rotation about point C, and that's plus R-C-B crossed with f Bx equals zero. So RCA is, we go in the x direction three feet and the z direction minus 12. So that's going to be 3i minus 12k crossed with FAX. FAX is all in the x direction, so it's going to be the magnitude of FAX in the i direction plus RCA again is 3i minus 12k crossed with 
F-A-Y, which is all in the Y direction. So that's F-A-Y and the J. Then I have R-C-D. So plus R-C-D to go from R from C to D, walking from tail to head as we did in my earlier course. We've got 3 in the X direction, so 3I plus 4J minus 12K crossed with the given force of 100I minus 100K. Plus, the last force is from R from C to B, so that's uh, nothing in the X direction, 4 in the J direction, and minus 12 in the K direction, crossed with FBX, which is all in the I direction, equals 0. Now, if you do those cross products in the mathematics, what you'll come out with for your uh, moment equation is 3FAY in the K direction plus 12FAY in the I direction minus 12FAX in the J direction plus 300J minus 400K minus 400I minus 1200J minus 4FBXK minus 12FBXJ. Now, if you couldn't do those cross products and come up with that result, again, I think you need to go back and review the skills that we learned in my earlier course, Introduction to Engineering Mechanics. And so once we have that, uh, the question is, what, what do we do now? And think about that. Okay, there's my equation, uh, the Moen equation that I just came up with. And what we're going to do is we need to solve uh, for these reactions by matching components. And so I've got I components on the left-hand side, J components, and K components. I have no components on the right-hand side in the I, J, and K direction because that's zero. So let's go ahead and match the, the uh, I components together. And I get on the left-hand side, I have 12 F, A, Y, and then I have minus 400 and equals 0. So what that tells me is FAY ends up equaling 33.3 or FAY as a vector is 33.3 in the J direction pounds. So that's one of my reactions that I wanted to solve for. Now, I'd like you to go ahead and do the J and K, match the J and K components to come up with the other solutions. And come on back and see how you did. Okay, here's the J and K components. You should be able to go through and, and check your work. Uh, you get two equations, two unknowns. You solve for FBX is minus 75 in the I direction and FA. Uh, F -A -F -B -X is minus 75, and FAX ends up being 0. And so here I've drawn uh, those components that we came up with. I came up with 33.3 together with you. Here's the two that you came up with. And so our last three reaction forces we need to determine are the X, Y, and Z. And the way to do that is by using, instead of a moment equation now, some of the forces in the X, um, Y, and Z direction. So let's do some of the forces in the X together. And we get, um, we have FCX for this one. Uh, and then we're going to have plus FBX. And the only other one we have is on this given force F, there's 100 uh, pounds in the I direction. So that's plus 100 equals 0. I can substitute in for what I found the value of FBX as being minus 75, and our result is FCX 
equals 25. And then why don't you go ahead and do the sum of the forces in the y and z direction. And once you do that, you should get FCY is minus 33.3, FCZ equals 100. And so now I also have the reaction forces uh, at C. Uh, when I put them all together, uh, I got minus 25 in the I direction, minus 33 in the J direction, plus 100K pounds, all acting at C. And we have now found all the reactions acting on this truss structure, and we'll come back next module to do the rest of the problem.